Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be finishing the series on landing a data science job in 2022. So far in this series, we have talked about how to target the right data scientist position for you, how to get interviews, and what topics you need to prepare for. As you have learned from previous videos, there are many subjects to study. And one of the most common questions I get is how to study effectively, how to prepare for interviews efficiently. So in this final video, we are going to be taking a deeper look at how to study and prepare for your data science interviews in 2022. The tips I want to discuss here are not only for interview preparation, but also for studying or learning just about anything. Studying by yourself and with online resources can be tricky. There are three challenges that you have to overcome with this. How do you stay focused and not get distracted? How do you keep your momentum going? And how do you work with a tight schedule? I'm going to go over some tips to help you answer these three questions and use your study time wisely when preparing for data science interviews. Let's get started. Before we dive into more specific study tips, I want to spend some time discussing what I believe is the biggest overall tip for studying effectively, and that is to have a study plan. There's no way you are going to be able to make the most of your time if you don't take the time to think through what you need to study and organize your time. Everyone's individual study plan is going to look different, but there are a few basic rules that I follow that can help you organize effectively. The first rule is to study two things a day. You can break that up into one main topic that you want to focus on and one topic that you want to review. You should start with the main topic when you're energetic and are able to focus, and you could switch to the secondary topic when you're tired and less able to focus. This way, you are still making progress even if you aren't at your absolute best all the time. The secondary topic also gives your brain a healthy place to go when you do get tired. Instead of going online and scrolling through interview questions and making yourself feel more overwhelmed, you should just switch to your secondary topic. I also suggest that when you study two things at once that you are strategic in what you group together. Selecting a technical and a non-technical topic such as statistics and behavioral questions so that you do not have to focus on too much technical information at once. You could also pick topics that have overlap or are similar to each other to make your preparation more efficient. For example, you could choose product case knowledge as your main topic and focus on learning different metrics that a business is tracking. Then your second focus could be SQL, which is related to product case questions, but it requires more logical thinking. There are many different combinations that can work to help you study productively. The reason I recommend this tip is because of its efficiency. If you focus on only one thing at a time, you are likely to experience mental fatigue, get stuck more often, and make overall slower progress. Looking at two subjects at once helps your brain stay more engaged and allows you to make faster progress. The next rule for making an effective study plan is to give each topic at least a week before moving on. In other words, don't change the topics you are studying every day. That could feel like you are covering a lot, but it doesn't give you enough time to truly deepen your understanding. You need time to absorb if you want to feel comfortable with what you are studying. Finally, when making a study plan, you should plan cycles. What I mean by that is you should plan to repeat all of the topics at least once. Repetition is essential for true mastery. Reviewing what you have learned throughout your preparation period is the only way to retain a lot of what you learn. Alright, if you learned nothing else from this video, then I hope you at least remember to make a study plan when preparing for your data science interviews. For everyone still around, don't worry, we are not done yet. Now that we know how to make an effective study plan, let's talk about some specific tips for making the most of your study time. So you have been able to make a study plan, but now how do you execute it? How do you stay motivated and avoid becoming so overwhelmed by the amount of things you need to learn that you cease to be productive? Staying focused is hard, especially when you are working through something at your own pace and under your own guidance. It's easy to get distracted by your phone, videos, or other news or information, and it's easier to lose your momentum than you may realize. If you start thinking that there are too many things to learn, that you are making progress too slowly, or that the interview questions are too difficult, you may find your studying slowing and slowing until you stop because you feel discouraged. These feelings are very natural, so how do you combat them? I believe that the key to stay motivated is setting small goals. Instead of having just a single goal of landing your dream job, 
Give yourself small daily or weekly goals. Small goals help you see and feel your progress. If you only have one large goal, you will never feel like you are making progress, and it will be easy to lose momentum, to doubt yourself, or even quit. For example, some large goals might be something like, I want to work at Meta, Google, or Amazon, or I want to be a data scientist at a fan company. You may also have the goal of wanting to earn over 200k per year. These goals are all too far big to keep you motivated. You need to break them down into smaller goals. Learning to break things down into small goals can be difficult. If you have no idea how to go about using small goals, I recommend this book, Atomic Habits. I recently read it, and it's a great read. One of the main ideas that this book explores is the importance of setting very small daily goals and then rewarding yourself when you achieve those goals. Celebrating small wins is very important to keep the momentum going. So instead of focusing on the goal of making 200k a year, you could instead set goals like I'm going to work on one easy SQL problem or one easy coding problem every day for this week. I'm going to spend 30 minutes studying product case knowledge every day, and I'm going to spend 50 minutes reading helpful blog posts. You should aim for two to three of these small goals every day. Why is setting small goals so much better than one large goal? When you set small goals, you don't have nearly as much resistance to getting started. It's a much easier hill to climb, and so it is easier and less frightening taking that first step. Small goals are also much easier to actually meet when you have limited time and other priorities, so you can still feel accomplished even when you aren't devoting as much time to your job search. Perhaps most important, small goals are much better at helping you create consistency. They teach you to do a little bit every day, rather than encouraging you to have extreme momentums of intense preparation followed by long periods of no motivation. So we have gone over a way to stay focused and organized by creating your own study plan, and a way to stay motivated by setting small goals. If you just use these tips, then your study will improve. But I'm not stopping here. I have a couple more tips to help you deal with specific problems when studying for your interviews. People often ask me how to prepare effectively when they have limited time. Maybe you are planning to interview in one month, or you have an upcoming interview in two weeks. How do you memorize things with a tight schedule? The fact is that the only way to master something is by repetition and practice. I don't believe that anyone can be really good at something after studying it only once. Even when working with a limited amount of time, you need to plan review sessions into your studying. Doing this will also help you feel more confident, which is crucial for how you come across in interviews. How does this work with a time limit? Let's say that you have four weeks to prepare for an interview, and you have four subjects you need to study: A, B, C, and D. It's tempting to study one subject a week, but this is not the best way to master them. If you study one subject per week, by the time of your interview, you will have completely forgotten about one or two of them. Instead, use the first tip to plan your study. Study two subjects at once. Your study week should then be A B C D A C and B D. As you repeat subjects, your speed will increase, and you may realize that you were learning more than you thought. No matter how much time you have to prepare for your interview, you should always plan reviews in your studying schedule. The last tip has to do with what to do when you get stuck or feel that you are slowing down while studying a subject. For example, you may get stuck on computing the probability in a coin flip problem, or you feel it's difficult to understand how sample size is calculated in an A/B test. What should you do? In this case, I want to remind you of the 80/20 rule, which says that you spend 20% of the time studying 80% of the things, and you spend 80% of the time grinding the details and diving into rabbit holes. So basically, we all tend to let small details and tangents that we don't quite understand eat up most of our studying time. What does this mean for your studying? It means that it's okay to move forward when you feel stuck or start to seriously slow down with the subject, especially if you are at a beginner level of a subject or it's the first time you have encountered the concept or problem. Instead of getting caught up on the details you don't understand. It's better to move forward to studying the 80% to get more coverage. Now, to clarify, I'm not saying that you should skip it entirely. You can come back to it to rethink it or review it. You will often find that if you think through something multiple times, you will be able to figure it out. If you really get stuck, you should ask for help from online resources or your friends or colleagues. 
That being said, sometimes if you want to make progress over R, you have to be willing to move on when you feel stuck. It's okay and it's better for your mentality and studying. Okay, that's pretty much everything I want to share with you in this video and for this series on landing a data science job in 2022. As you continue with your job search and your study and the preparation, I want to leave you with a manifesto that I share with all my students and the clients. There is no failure, only feedback. As you work towards your goal of landing a data science job, you will face moments of rejection and disappointment. You probably won't get every interview you apply for, and you may not even pass every interview. How you choose to handle the disappointments will have a big impact on your overall job search. As you study and practice, remember to see everything as a learning opportunity. Not getting an interview or not passing your on-site interview is a chance for you to understand what to work on and to come back next time and do better. There's no failure, only feedback. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have had a chance to check out the other videos in this series as well. Subscribe to my channel so that you can stay up to date to my newest videos and content. I will see you next week. Bye, guys.